As people who practice Agile for customers, ultimately we want our skills and the things we know how to do to bring value to the people that we serve. And sometimes the easiest way to find that, the greatest way to help serve, is to find the things that hurt. That's this week on the Badass Agile Podcast. Greetings, team. Welcome to the Badass Agile Podcast. I'm your host, Chris Williams. Well, hey there, crew. Nice to see you. Thanks for tuning in once again this week. I hope you're having a beautiful summer. The greatest, most revealing question isn't always, what do you need? But just as often, it's what's not working. Before we dig into that, let's take a moment to remember why we're here. To create an elite tribe of leaders who truly serve their clients and communities by doing what matters and what works, relentlessly chasing value and excellence like a badass. There's so many resources out there about what you need to do to be agile, but we're focused on who you need to become in order to lead teams. So let's hammer down those fundamentals to create a truly unique and powerful force in this industry. And remember, if this helps you, tell your friends. In a few weeks, I'll be talking about the 12 Agile principles one more time, the first of which being that our primary focus should be on value to the customer. One of the things I'll be discussing is I think this is the hardest one for us to nail, because if you think about it, if our primary focus should be on delighting the customer, it should be where our most energetic thinking and effort is directed to. But is it? There's lots of things that a customer can potentially need or want, but maybe the most important ones are screaming at us the whole time and we're not even looking. I think that every pain reveals an opportunity. So it's on us then to become experts in resolving the things that hurt, the things that aren't working, the things that are clearly slowing us down, causing us unhappiness, creating imbalances, creating frustration, creating failures. You know, we talk a lot about failures, but ultimately failure is not the mission. Failure is how we learn. Failure is how we free ourselves to experiment and to go boldly, but it's not where we want to end up if things aren't working. If after months and months of effort, we're simply going back to the way we've always done things, we're getting the same kinds of results that we've gotten before, that's going to feel bad. It's going to feel bad for the people who work on those teams. It's going to feel bad from people who are expecting benefits. And it's going to feel terrible for those people who are paying for us to be doing what we do. So sometimes it's very helpful to shift our attention away from the features that people say they want and get into observation mode and really see what's not happening, what's not working, what are people struggling with. And I don't think we spend enough time doing that. Look at it this way. If we can get good at finding and fixing pain, then we clear the way for the teams to deliver whatever it is they want to deliver. We can become completely agnostic of features, value streams, and priorities. It doesn't matter what you want to build. Our job is to help you make it better, to build it better, to improve your delivery process, to make it easier for you to deliver continuous value to the customer. But if we don't handle the things that hurt first, We're going to be using a broken engine, a broken machine to try to deliver those results. So let's look at some examples of pain where things might hurt. First, there's the pain that the customer feels. If they're using your product as an example, think about any customer experience you've had lately, especially ones that didn't go well. Too often, we think about what it is we have to sell that the customer should want to buy and not about what the customer actually wants to experience. So if you've had an experience lately, maybe you can relate, where there was a customer service issue, you wanted something that you wanted, but because of policies, procedures, and rules, the big co couldn't give it to you. And maybe it was something simple. Maybe you were leasing some equipment, and you knew you wanted to upgrade and renew as soon as the lease was done, but you needed a little more time before you decided which product you were going to choose. So you simply assumed that you could hang on and keep paying for the thing you were already leasing. And then the company tells you, well, it doesn't work that way. Either you renew the lease or you don't. There's no bridging mechanism. And it's for this reason or that reason. But those reasons all seem to add up to things that are convenient for the company. We have forgotten how to delight customers. 
And you don't do it by focusing on what you want. You do it by focusing on what they want. So one of the easiest ways to find and identify pain is to look at where we're not nailing it for the customer. How many times are they telling us that there's something that they wanted to do, they wanted to give us money, but we wouldn't let them because of our processes, because of our beliefs, because of our selfish wants, or because we've built things in such a way that facilitate our happiness and not theirs. See, as an agile consultant, I don't sell what I want to sell. I don't sell agility. I don't sell scrum. I don't sell method. I don't sell process. I barely sell training. What I sell is identifying and solving problems that block the flow of customer value, also known as revenue. Now, we all know this. Think about it. The companies that are willing to pay for agile services are the big co's, the big companies, banks, insurance companies, government, etc. But they're the ones that we most commonly hear the complaint that, you know, we're not really doing agile here. We're not really being agile. I'm basically a glorified project manager with a JIRA key. Well, if that's true, it means the likelihood is that we're doing at least some of this wrong and we're missing the opportunity to delight customers. We're leaving revenue on the table. We're leaving customers on the table. We're increasing dissatisfaction, churn, reputation, and all of those things that get unlocked when we delight our customers. So look for those places, find that pain, and fix those first. The second place where we're most likely to find pain is in our own internal delivery processes. So everything that we talk about here on Badass Agile, around shifting mindset, around shifting attitudes, and most importantly, shifting habits, will fall into this category. It's in here that you'll notice people focusing on things like consensus way more than they focus on customer value, way more than they focus on getting things to market quickly. It's also in here that you'll notice aversion to failure, that deep craving for safety, How do I know these things are a pain point? Because we'll make promises or we will fear to make promises around when can we have it. See, again, as an agile consultant, I love to be bold. I love to say, how long do you think that'll take you? When someone says 12 weeks, I can say, I'll get it to you in two. Now, I can do that with confidence because I know that the agile ecosystem supports me with, if I can't deliver exactly what I say in the exact amount of time that I promise to deliver it in, either there is a blocker and I know I will work tirelessly to remove and eliminate blockers, or I will slightly negotiate scope or MVP, either in number or degree of doneness, until I can get to delivering massive value, in this case, in one-sixth of the time. But when we don't truly believe that that will create value, when we have it in our heads that MVP is not the same thing as a done product, then we've gone right back to waterfall, all or nothing delivery, where either we deliver the whole thing or we deliver no thing. And that, my friends, is a pain point. It's a pain point caused by wrong thinking, wrong attitude, and unconscious autopilot behavior. So here's the trick. Until we fix this pain, none of your other delivery mechanisms are going to work. None of the features that you want to deliver will come in on time. They will not be ambitious enough. They will not solve the right customer problems. Instead, they will be married to a certain technology, a certain way of doing, a certain process, a certain governance, or something else that makes us feel more comfortable, more safe, but does nothing to change results. Anytime a company fails to deliver on its promises, we feel pain. That pain could be anything from we're last to market, so we lost because now we're a follower instead of a leader, to we're burning our people out because we don't know how to deliver efficiently and effectively. So we're asking them to do more and more things, and we're never willing to compromise on things like degree of doneness, levels of documentation, or detailed forecast and project management plans. This is pain. This is what hurts. This is what's broken. And too often I see when I work on teams is that we simply excuse it away, we gloss it over, and assume that somehow this will get better on its own. And then agility is reduced to people doing air quotes around the words in the interest of being more agile, which simply means we'll work harder, we'll push it into the red, etc., etc. Or it means If you change your mind at the last possible minute, when you finally see this product, we will accept changing requirements, not throughout the process, 
But at the very end, when it's clear to everyone that we've done it wrong, that's not what agility means. And it's this miscommunication that everyone blames agile failure on. Why wait till the end until the thing is a failure to identify that pain, to speak truth to power now and say your way of working is not a way of working at all. And it's definitely not air quotes in the interest of being agile. Here's where I want you to focus. Here's where I need you to be doggedly persistent in solving these problems. In fact, in finding these problems. So the moment you identify them, this is your role as a scrum master, as a coach, asking the question, what's not working here and what else might work? How can we do this differently so that just for once we can deliver a promise not only on time, but way ahead of time. What can we do so that we reduce the traditional cost of waste that we simply accept, that we see it going by and we ignore it? We assume that that's the only way because it's the way we've always done things. You have to have the attitude that you are the best problem solver, the best MVP -er in the world, and your duty is not to make delivery faster. Your duty is to deliver value now. And there's a big difference. Doesn't feel like it. Sounds like all we're trying to do is speed up how we get to market or speed up how we finish our work. But that's not true. It is to accelerate value that delights, amazes, shocks, and awes our customers. We cannot wait. We cannot compromise on our belief system, on our knowledge, our certainty that this is the best way to do that. So I always like to ask this, what's in your backlog? Is it all just features and fixes and upgrades? Or do you have it in your backlog to say, I have to fix this communication problem. I have to fix this 30-day lead time that my external vendor introduces into the delivery chain. I have to fix this attitude that we can't possibly sign off and agree to a set of requirements or a way of going forward in anything less than two weeks or two months or two years. But instead, we can make decisions now. It's on these points that we have an ability to demonstrate excellence, to demonstrate truly a new and powerful way of working that aligns us to the modern reality of delivering technology, delivering products, and delivering solutions, delivering customer delight. I hope this one lights you up and helps you. You can find me, as always, on BadassAgile.com, on Instagram at BadassAgile, on Twitter at Badass underscore Agile. I look forward to seeing you next time. And until then, stay badass. Badass.